people all over this world. Yeah, people all over this world. Say people all over this world, they're looking for Jesus. Hello, 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 my friend. It's me again, Bishop John R. Stevenson, and I would like to welcome you to another edition of It's a Word Thing. Let us pray together. Father, we're so grateful that you've given us another opportunity to study your word, to show ourselves approved unto God, rightly being able to divide the word of truth. Father, we thank you for preparing this table for us. So we're going to take our place at the table as you break open the bread of life to us today. We give you glory and we give you praise right now, Father, for the revelation knowledge that you're going to speak to your people that will bring the wisdom of God alive in their life. We bless you and thank you for this opportunity to do so. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, my friends. How are you? I pray that all is well with your soul today. Glory be to God. I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health as your soul prospers, my friend, today. So we're going to get right into the Word of God, right into the teaching, because I, I, I believe it's important that I, I take advantage of the time that God has given me to teach you the things that God would have me to teach you. All glory, my friend, be to God. All glory be to God. Get your pen, your paper, get your Bible, my friend, and let's dive into the Word of God. I want to say something that I really believe right now in my spirit, the Holy Spirit is saying, talking to me about. You know, the Bible is the sword of the Spirit. This is our weapon of mass destruction against our enemy. But I found, my friend, that so many people don't know how to use their weapon. And so many people don't know the books of the Bible, don't know how to use their Bible, friend. And the enemy is doing everything he can to take us farther and farther away from the Word of God. I'm going to keep sending it until my last breath on this earth. It's a trap, my friend. I mean, we didn't got so used to pulling out phones and, and little devices and, and going find stuff. But, but my friend, you need, to, you need to know how to use this Bible because this Bible is not going to fail you or let you down. But the enemy, somebody is controlling that little phone, that little device. You're not learning anything by Googling, friend. You're not learning anything. You, you, you don't have to remember anything because it, it's, it, you can just push a button. And Friend, you, you need to learn how to use this Bible, friend. You need to know the books of the Bible. You need to know how to navigate in and throughout this Bible. This is what you need, friend. It'll never fail you. It's not battery, op battery operated. It's not controlled by man, friend. Get you a Bible and learn how to use it, friends. Learn how to use it. I'm not against technology, friend. I am not against technology. I love technology. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. But we're using it for the wrong reasons a lot of time. It's making us lazy. It's making us lazy, friends. Lazy. Mm-hmm. Lazy. I watch people all the time struggle to find a book in the Bible. They don't know whether it's Old or New Testament. Don't know. You don't want to be that way, friend. Them devices going to let you down. Enough said. Let's look. Let's look. Uh, we're going to start because we're dealing with faith still is. And we're talking about, we're, we're bringing home, we're hammering it in uh, that Jesus Christ is faith. Jesus is faith. And I believe that, I believe that uh, we've proven that with Scripture. I believe we've proven that. Uh, the Bible has proved that to us by, by the Scriptures. But listen what, what, what we're going to start today. This is why I ended the segment uh, last time we were together. Whatever faith has ever been, it still is. Whatever faith have ever been, it still is. Because the Bible says, the Bible says in our opening scripture, in our opening scripture, <clears throat> in uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 8, that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and ever. Just, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the Bible lets us know that our God is a God who changes it not. So whatever faith was, Whatever faith have ever been, faith still is. And this is where the Lord want me to start with us today, friends. Faith is still the key. Faith is still the key. Jesus is still the key that unlocks heaven's supply house. Glory to God. 
in Matthew chapter 16, verse number 19, my friends, it's amazing how Jesus asked, who did they say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they came up with all the different names, my friend, with all the different names and everything. Matter of fact, I, I can read it for you because we, we, we're right here. We're right here in the Scripture, so I can read it to you. Matthew 16, starting at verse number 13, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some uh, Elijah, another Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Verse 15, he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven, and I say also unto thee, watch now, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Verse 19 is where we were going. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven heaven. Glory to God. And so faith is still the key, my friend, that unlocks heaven's supply house. Faith is still the key that gets you in. God only responds to our faith. He responds to prayer, but he's responding to the prayer of faith. James said the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Yes, the prayer of faith, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, the prayer of faith availed much, my friend. Glory to God. Yes, we got to understand, watch now, Revelation 3 and uh, uh, 7. Revelation 3 and 7, let's look and see what it says. Revelation 3 and 7, my friend. This is the message to the church at uh, Philadelphia. And the angel of the church in Philadelphia wrote, these things said he that is holy, he that is true, he that had the key of David, he that openeth and no man shut it and shut it and no man openeth. You see what I'm saying, friend? Faith is still the key that unlocks the door to heaven's supply house. Glory to God. Watch this now. Faith is still the doorway glory to God, that leads me to God. Faith is still the doorway, uh-huh, faith is still the access to God. Jesus is still the way to God and to the things of God. He's the doorway. Let's look at some scriptures that lets us know that in John chapter 10, verse number 7 through 10. John chapter 10, verse 11 through 10. Let's look at what it says. Because faith is still the key, friend, and faith is still the doorway. It's still the gateway to the Father. Uh-huh. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. <clears throat> and we're going to start at verse number 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. And, and all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. You see that, my friend? Verse 10 said, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. You see what I'm saying, friend? Faith still is. Faith is still the key that unlocks the storehouse of heaven. And faith is still the door that give us access to God and to the things of God. Faith still is. It still is. The, it's the same this year, friend. We're not going to be able to walk through this, this year, journey through this year, live through this year without faith. It's a must. You must have faith, at least at the size of a mustard seed. If you got it as of a mustard seed, friend, you can talk to the mountain. You can speak to the sycamine tree, tell it to pluck up and go root itself somewhere else. Tell that mountain to move and go yonder hence. And the Bible said it shall get up and move. Come on, friend. Faith 
still is. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 18, is still talking about the door. It's still talking about the door. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 18, still talking about access. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 18, watch what it says. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. You see that, friend? Through, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. So, so faith is still the only way I can get to the Father. It's still that way, friend. Things haven't changed. You, you're going to need faith more so this year because you're going to have more challenging times this year because of laws and because of rules and because of the things that the world is doing. You're going to be challenged, my friend, and you're going to need faith. You still need faith more than you need anything else when it comes to dealing with this world and living in this world. You're not of it, my friend. You're not of it if you're born again. You're not of it, but you're in this world too. And so we have to make sure that we understand, listen, there is still only one faith that gets us to God. That faith, that, I'm sorry, there is still only one faith that gets us to God, the Father. And that faith is in Jesus Christ. There's still only one faith. He's the measure of faith, my friend. We found that out. Jesus is the measure of faith. He is faith. Just like God is love, he is faith faith. There's only one faith. It's not faith in Buddha, Muhammad, none of those other gods, my friend. The faith that gets us to God, to the heavenly Father, that gets us to heaven is Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 8. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 8. Look at what it says, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 through 8. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called into one hope, of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Come on, my friend. He is the measure of faith. It's right here, friend. He is the measure of faith. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he said, when he had ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my friend. Uh, let's look at John chapter 14, verse number 6. John chapter 14 and verse number 6. Uh-huh. We, we know that's, that's very familiar. John 14 and 6. Uh-huh. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Watch now, friend. And no man cometh to the Father but by me. You see that, friend? He, he is the faith. He's the, there's only one faith that get us there, and Jesus is that faith. Galatians 2 and 20. How about we look at that? Galatians 2. And, I deal with the Bible, friend. I stay in the Bible because Scripture will bear record and witness to everything. Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20 is where we're going. Look at what it says. Look at what it says. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ live in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Look at that, friend. I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Can, can, you, can you understand? Are, are you grabbing hold, my friend, to what God is saying to us right now? There is still only one faith that get us to God, and that faith is Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 27, Matthew chapter 11, verse 27, notice what it says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 27. Look what it says. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father, watch this, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him to. You see that, my friend? It, that, there's no other way, there's no other way that we can get to God 
uh, other than that measure of faith, who is Jesus Christ, that's been given to us. We just saw it in the, in the other passage of Scripture, my friend, where it said that he's the gift of the measure. Let's look at Romans uh, chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, because we're talking about the faith that give us access to God. Romans chapter 5, verse number 1 and 2. Romans chapter 5. Verse 1 and 2. Look at what it says, my friend. Look what it says. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we, uh, uh, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Look at that, friend. That there's still only one faith that gets us to God, that connects us to God, that gives us access to God and the things of God, and that faith is the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, friend, clap your hands for Jesus, for what God is teaching us today. Because of what God is teaching us today, friend, it's in your Bible. This, this word is a powerful thing if we can just get in it and, and understand what it is that we're reading. I love this thing. I love this word, and I love the God of the word. And I want to help you fall in love with it, my friends. Why is this? Faith has healed, so faith still heals. Faith have healed, so faith still heals. Uh, we're talking about, we talk about how faith came, right? And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, and we say that faith is Jesus, and God sent him. He's the faith that came because he was sent. Now, now, hearing that, my friend, let's look at Psalms 107 and 20, and let's listen to what it says. Excuse me. Psalms 107, verse number 20. Let's look at what it says. Understanding that faith cometh, and it comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Jesus being the word made flesh, and Jesus was sent. Watch what it says. Psalms 107 and 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. Come on, friend. We, there's a whole lot of things coming up on us, sicknesses and diseases that's coming, pestilence and stuff that's coming in our world, friend. But you got to understand that God have already sent his word. His word has already went forth, and his word will not return void. His word being his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I have finished the work that you sent me to do. Come on, friends. Come on, friends. Get glad about this. Get excited about this. Uh-huh. He sent his word. His word healed them. Jesus healed them and delivered them uh -huh, from all their destructions. What did Jesus do when he came, friend? He healed them. Matthew chapter 8, verse number 8. If you would, Matthew chapter 8, verse number 8. I love it, friends. Matthew chapter 8, verse number 8. Listen to what the centurion says. This is what the centurion says right here in, in uh, Matthew 8, verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, uh-huh, and my servant shall be healed. So he said, just speak the word because watch this, watch this, there's the power of death and life in the tongue. And Romans chapter 4, 17 says, uh, I, I can speak those things that be not as though they were. So the centurion say, just speak the word. In other words, when I speak that word, that word goes out and grabs what I need and brings it back because it will not return void, friend. It's going to uh, do those things that's pleasing to God. It's going to go out and get exactly what the Word of God says it's supposed to go out and get. So he said, just speak healing. Glory to God. He said, just speak healing. Friend, we got to get to the place to where we have the faith that we understand faith still is, and if we can just speak, just say what he say, friend, we'll get the results that he got. We'll see what this Bible says if we speak the word. If we speak the word, Luke chapter 4, verse number 18, we all familiar with this verse. Luke chapter 4 and verse number 18. I'm, I'm excited, friend, about what God is saying and what God is doing right now. Now, now watch now. The faith still heals today. Faith still heals today, friend. That one with the issue of blood said, if I could but touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be made whole, Matthew 9, 20, 22. And it says that Jesus said, daughter, your faith have made you whole. He said, your faith. He, it, the faith have to become mine, friend. 
He has to become my faith. He is the measure of faith, but he's not my measure. I don't have it until I accept him as my Lord and Savior. Believe on him. We in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Watch, friend. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and to recover the sight of the blind, to set liberty to them that are bruised. Look at that, friend. What faith was able to do in 2015 is more able to do it in 2016 because God already know the challenges that's coming in this year of 2016. <coughs> Excuse me. But friend, I am, I am so excited right now about the times that we're in right now. I'm so excited because it gives the church an opportunity to rise up and be the church, friend. Rise up and be who God then called us to be as the church. I'm not talking about buildings. I'm talking about the people of God. We are the body of Christ. We are the church. And if the world is going to have faith in God, they need to see us have faith in God, friend. They need to see us walk in faith. So every time something happens, we shouldn't get all shook up and, and tore up about it, friends, crying and screaming and trying to figure out what I'm going to do. You serve a God that's supposed to supply all of your needs. Do you believe that or not, friend? Do you believe that or not? Because if you believe it like this, listen, let me help you with something. If your boss come to you and say, Listen, we're going to have to we're going to have to terminate you or lay you off. You ought to start shouting, friend, because if that door didn't close, it means God's got another door open for you. That's telling you that faith is still in control. Faith is still in charge. So I got faith in God. I don't have faith in money. I don't have faith in my job. I got faith in God. Glory to God. God gave me the job. I got the job. I got the career. I got it all because God gave it to me. So I don't have faith. Paul said we've got away from, we've gotten away from having faith in God. We got more faith in the creation. We didn't got to the place. We don't love God. We love creation. We don't worship God. We worship creation. No, friend, it's the other way around. We're supposed to worship the God who created it all. Glory to God. The God who got the power to create it all. Come on, friend. Walk with me. Walk with me. And so the Bible says, the Bible says, by faith, God framed the world by his words. In Hebrews chapter 11, that's Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number three. It says, the Bible tells us that, that God framed the worlds by his words, my friend. So guess what God told me to write down for us? It is your faith that is still framing your world in 2016. Glory to God. He say, it is your faith that is still framing your world in 2016. So friend, be careful about what you say. Be careful about what come out of your mouth, friend. Have faith in God. I told the congregation last night, don't worry about how high the gas prices get. Don't be murmuring and complaining. Whatever you can put in your tank, put it in the tank. Don't go clowning, complaining stuff. Hush your mouth, put it in the tank. Have faith in God that God's going to give you money no matter how high the gas prices go, friend. He's going to provide for you. Don't be like your neighbors. Don't be like everybody else just complaining about everything. Have faith in God because faith still is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are framing your world by the words that you say because you will only have what your faith is able to bring you, friend. Matthew chapter 9 again, if you will. Matthew chapter 9 again, looking at verse 28 and 29. Matthew chapter 9, looking at verse 28 and 29. You're only going to have what your faith can bring you, friend. You're framing your world by your faith today. Just like God did, you're framing your world. Now watch what it says in Matthew chapter 9, verse 28 and 29. Listen to what it says, friend. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. This is important, friend. Believe that I am able to do this. They said unto him, Yea, Lord, verse 29. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Friend, your world is going to look like your faith level. Your world is going to look like 
the faith that you say you have in God. If you don't have any faith in God, your world is going to show that. Your world is going to depict that. Your life is going to depict that, friend. So listen, faith still is. Glory to God. I love this thing. And faith is still doing what faith has always done, friend. Faith is still doing what faith has always done. Your faith is going to do for you what your faith has always done for you. You need to get this, friend. <laughs> you need to grow from faith to faith. You need to grow in your faith because faith is still, let, let me say it to you again, faith is still doing what faith has always done. Where your faith has always been, is that's all you're going to have, friend. So you want things to get better, go farther, you're going to have to do better in your faith, friend, because faith is still able to do what faith has always done. Clap your hand for Jesus, friend. Come on, grab hold to the truth because the truth that you receive, not just truth, friend, the truth that you receive is what makes you free. The truth that you receive and believe and apply is what makes you free, my friend. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. How do I get to a place to where, to where I can walk in the kind of faith that Bishop is talking about? You have to give your life to Christ. Accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, my friend. And then he becomes your faith and your faith, glory to God, and your faith will make things happen for you. Until you do that, friend, you don't have to measure. And he's not your faith. But he told that woman her faith had made a whole because she owned it. She had received him, accepted him to the point to where now he's her faith. Friend, I hope you've enjoyed the teaching. I've enjoyed presenting it to you. And I hope I've done it in a way to where you could understand it. So my prayer for you is that you grab hold to what God has said to you and apply it to your everyday living. My time is growing nigh right now. I love being with you and I pray. I pray for you. I pray for the viewers. I don't know you by name or anything personally, but I'm praying for the viewing audience. And if you're a part of that audience, then I'm praying for you. Listen, friend, it's been real good and it's been fun. But like I always say to you, it's been a word thing. And until we meet again, friend, God bless you and I love you to life. I love you to life. Till we meet again, my friend, this has been Bishop John R. Stevenson. God bless you now. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, friend. People all over this world, yeah. People all over this world Say people all over this world They're looking for Jesus